Hello, my name is Eric Walenza, CEO of IoT One, and today I'll be speaking to you about the topic of trends in industrial edge computing. And we'll be discussing the topic both from a global perspective, but also from a, the Chinese market perspective. IoT One is a research consultancy focused on the industrial IoT space, and we look at the market from five perspectives. First, from the use case perspective, um, how is value being created? Second, to the technology stack that underlines these use cases. Third, to the business models, or how are we monetizing solutions. Um, fourth, from the company ecosystem perspective. And finally, uh, from the perspective of the macro environment or the regulatory frameworks and the demographics that define the market. We view edge computing as the next computing cycle evolution. So we moved from the mainframe computer to the client PC, to the smartphone uh, that relies on primarily on cloud computing, um, and now to edge computing. And of course, we still use mainframes to some extent. We still use PCs and smartphones very heavily, and we'll continue to. Uh, but now we see edge computing as a very important addition uh, to the computing landscape. But what is edge computing? So I view edge computing as the collection of hardware and software technologies that enable storage, computing, processing, and networking close to the device that generates or consumes data, or close to the end user. Now close here is the critical term, um, and what does close mean? So certainly close means closer than the cloud, right? The cloud can be virtually anywhere, even if it's strategically uh, located in some region, it's certainly not close to the end device or the end user. Um, now, but it doesn't necessarily mean on device. Close can mean um, on servers that are co-located with cell towers. It can be on on, on premise servers, on a factory, uh, or in a hospital. Um, on gateways that serve uh, a room or a collection of devices in a in a close environment, um, or it can mean directly on the operational device. So here we're looking at um, the computing or the the edge computing. Um, uh, landscape. So where can edge computing happen? Again, on the device, uh, on the gateway, on local edge nodes or cell tower nodes, or on the uh, edge computing uh, data center. Now let's next look at three markets where edge computing is already providing real value today. The first of those markets is advanced mobility. Now vehicles already are quite sophisticated computers today, so it's very natural that the mobility market would be an early adopter of edge computing solutions. We can look at this from two perspectives. The first perspective is situational awareness that is built directly into the vehicle via sensors. Um, for example, a vehicle can identify uh, hazards ahead, be it objects, uh, people, other vehicles. And this is already in use today as a safety feature, but it will become increasingly uh, important as autonomous vehicles begin to share the streets with uh, human-driven vehicles and pedestrians. We can also look at this from the perspective of the vehicle uh, integrated with the city infrastructure. For example, we could more optimally route a vehicle to a destination if we can identify the status of traffic lights ahead. Uh, a vehicle could uh, Im improve fuel efficiency if we can identify the location of parking spots or charging stations. And, and we can also improve safety if the city infrastructure can tell a vehicle that it's likely to be raining or that there might be ice on a particular road based on the micro weather conditions around that, uh, that specific road or, or bridge, for example. Now, the next market that we'll look at is uh, facility management. And, and we're looking here at a, uh, um, a construction site situation. So on a construction site, we have kind of a wide variety of assets that we might want to monitor, um, safety concerns related to people that we would want to monitor, and also processes such as electricity consumption, uh, water consumption, and potentially also uh, pollution outputs. So edge computing can allow us to uh, monitor these situations in real time in a situation where we, we might have limited cloud connectivity uh, or where the latency uh, to connect to a cloud uh, might not be sufficient, specifically when we're, we're uh, tracking uh, kind of safety related uh, situations such as uh, the location of people and the location of assets and, and ongoing work. Now the third uh, market that we're looking at is the manufacturing market. And here we, we're taking a different perspective. So we're looking at 20 common use cases uh, across a study where we um, 
cataloged uh, 734 specific deployments or case studies. And what we were looking at here specifically was which use cases can be deployed um, on the cloud, on the edge, or on both. And, and the reality of the situation is that um, in most use cases could be deployed on either the cloud or the edge. Uh, some use cases can be de uh, should should best be deployed on a combination of cloud plus edge. So you want to do different types of computing power on both. Um, the uh, the value of deploying on the edge uh, versus the cloud is contingent on a, a few factors. It's contingent on um, the amount of data that you have to move uh, in order to uh, process. Um, so if you have to move a significant amount of data, you're going to have quite significant um, transmission costs. Um, it's contingent on whether that data needs to be combined with other data sources. So if we're looking at, for example, one production line, that might be uh, best studied on the edge. Uh, but if we're looking at, uh, for example, um, the production of a product and then uh, also the arrival of raw materials from a supplier, uh, then we would have to centralize that data into a cloud because it's coming from multiple sources that are not proximate to each other, right? One is coming from the factory, the other is coming from a supplier, and so uh, those data sources would have to be centralized uh, somewhere on the cloud. Um, my expectation is that as the edge improves, more computing will be uh, pushed down to the edge, uh, but the cloud will, of course, uh, maintain a very uh, significant role. And there's some disagreement around uh, whether 5G adoption will actually uh, make it easier to move data from the edge to the cloud and therefore make the edge less valuable, or whether uh, 5G will support uh, adoption of solutions on the edge by uh, enabling uh, data to, to be brought to the edge and processed there or, or transmitted locally. I think the, the reality is that both uh, in the industrial IoT space, both cloud computing and uh, edge computing are both relatively new and are both uh, going to see a very significant adoption trends. And the, the question of whether to deploy on the cloud or in the edge is going to depend on the use case, but also on each company's specific operational uh, um, situation and, and considerations uh, regarding cost, um, you know, CapEx versus OpEx, and then also, um, uh, also uh, uh, safety concerns. This then brings us to the question of who is active in edge computing markets. And edge computing markets are quite unique in the variety of companies with a stake in developing relevant technologies and, and use cases. So if we look at the tech stack here, this is, this is really not so much the edge computing tech stack as just the industrial IoT tech stack, but I wanted to illustrate this uh, to show the, the variety of companies that have a stake. So if we look at the physical world, we can look at companies like uh, Tesla or DJI, who are uh, device manufacturers, but who are producing devices uh, where uh, edge computing is, is really a critical component, and because of that, they are also developing their own technologies um, and, and even uh, selling those technologies outside of the device to, uh, to other third parties as a platform. Then we look at the edge layer. The edge layer is really where the incumbents sit here. So many of these companies have been somehow building uh, edge computing solutions or edge connectivity solutions at least uh, for, uh, for decades. Um, so here we have companies like Ad Advantech, companies like Texas Instruments, uh, Bosch. Um, then we have uh, the uh, cloud layer. Now the cloud layer uh, here, um, of course, does not only sit uh, in a, a data center that is uh, kind of uh, far separated away from the edge. Many of the cloud players are building solutions specifically for the edge. So they're basically bringing the cloud down to the edge to reduce latency, to reduce uh, the data transmission costs, et cetera. So, so now we're seeing um, cloud deployed uh, on-premise to an extent. So this premise could be in a factory. This premise could be uh, a city. Um, then, of course, we have applications designed uh, specifically for the edge. Um, if we look at the supporting technologies, uh, the supporting technologies are also being developed or customized uh, to support edge computing. So analytics and modeling uh, on the edge is quite different from, uh, from modeling on the cloud in that it's done on a very uh, constrained compute environment. Um, cybersecurity on the edge uh, has its own, its own constraints. So we have a, a whole ecosystem of companies that are developing supporting technologies uh, to enable edge computing. So in the whole, the edge computing market is very dynamic. It has a very broad array of, of stakeholders. 
Uh, I want to give one example of a company that I personally find quite interesting um, that's building an edge computing solution. And this is, this is a company called Turbine. It's a startup. They've just launched their uh, solution this year uh, to the market. Um, and what they are building is uh, fundamentally, a, you can think of it like a Bloomberg for uh, IoT data. So it's a, a centralized uh, data marketplace where you can tap into a stream of IoT data and gain access to that. Uh, and so that in itself is already a very uh, interesting um, uh, business model, and that's primarily a cloud-based business model, right, where they have a central repository. But now they've learned that the value of data um, can, in some cases, increase as the, uh, the latency decreases, right? So uh, if we have uh, real-time access to a data stream, it has value X, and if, if that data is then 10 minutes old, it has value Y, and value Y might be much lower than value X, depending on how I'm trying to use this. So then the question is, can we get real-time access to this uh, data? Um, and what they've also found is that a lot of data is um, more valuable locally than globally. So some, some data, um, you, you want to purchase a large time series um, and you want it maybe from multiple different sources, uh, that's, that's fine, then that can be a cloud-based solution. But some data, you need it real time and you need it local. You want to know uh, what's happening to all the vehicles you know, on this street, in this neighborhood. And the way that they're addressing that is they're deploying uh, the turbine node uh, on uh, the uh, base stations, uh, local 5G uh, base stations, or cell towers. And so the way that works is they have the master control tower uh, that sits in the cloud. Then they have these regional uh, MSO nodes that sit uh, in different, you know, let's say in a city or that cover a region, um, and those can communicate to multiple um, cell towers. But in situations where they really need uh, real-time uh, access to data, or where their customers require this, uh, then they can deploy the nodes directly on a cell tower, and uh, all of the devices that are communicating to that 5G cell tower can then access each other, right, without going through um, the the backhaul, right. Um, so that reduces the the cost of moving data, also uh, increases the uh, the latent, uh, reduces the latency, right, increases the ability to use that data in, in real time. So I thought this was a very uh, interesting um, adoption of you know, a technology that's, that's first of all quite new, right? Building this uh, central data repository for IoT data, but then bringing that down to the edge so it doesn't just sit in the cloud as kind of time series data, but can really be used in real time. Now, if we look more in China, who are the key players? Um, here we've divided them into uh, automation, OEM, end users, IT, I, ICT cloud, ICT connectivity, and industrial software. And there's just a couple of things I want to note about the Chinese market. Number one is um, we see uh, quite, of course, uh, strong positions by multinationals, but also strong positions by many local uh, Chinese companies. Um, if we look at the edge portfolio on the bottom, we see some areas um, it, it's not it's shown so explicitly here, but the gateway, for example, where uh, a very wide variety of companies are uh, investing in gateways, uh, even end users or OEMs uh, who uh, don't have any traditional business there, but view this as an extension of their business that makes sense because the technology is relatively mature and it's incorporated into a wide variety of, of solutions. So you have some aspects of the tech stack that are becoming quite, uh, quite saturated. Um, the other thing I want to emphasize here is the ecosystem strategy. Um, so uh, on the edge, ecosystem strategy is, is quite critical uh, because companies want more or less a, an end-to-end -end solution, right? So they want a one-stop uh, solution, which is very difficult for many of the traditional edge uh, providers, uh, companies to, to provide uh, because they're primarily selling a specific technology and then being able to bring that uh, end solution to market requires uh, collaborating with partners. Another perspective on the Chinese market is the ecosystem around the Edge Computing Consortium, the ECC. And this is a kind of quasi-governmental organization. Um, there are 260 members, uh, 26 of them are, are non-mainland companies, the rest are mainland companies. Some of the, um, the, the founding members, so Intel and, and ARM, are also um, uh, multinationals or nine Chinese companies. Um, um, a couple things to point out here. One is industrial software is uh, the largest uh, company group. So these are, if you look, look at the six founding organizations, they're not industrial software companies, right? 
Um, but when we look at the bulk of the companies that are involved, they're either industrial software or OEM. So industrial software is one of the areas around edge computing where we see a very strong presence of uh, younger startup companies entering in. Uh, and a lot of the innovation, uh, because the, the hardware is more mature, a lot of the innovation is now being driven by these industrial software companies. And then the OEMs, the automation companies, the ICT companies are either building their own software or they're looking to acquire younger companies in order to build up this capability and, and to provide more of a full uh, tech stack around the edge. Now, why is the edge uh, growing so quickly in China? Um, one of the key reasons is uh, the, the very significant investment in uh, 5G infrastructure. China's expected to invest approximately $180 billion uh, in uh, 5G infrastructure over the next uh, five years. Um, by the 2025, China is expected to have approximately 1.9 billion cellular IoT connections and, of course, many more non-cellular IoT connections. So we'll have a very robust uh, connectivity environment for edge devices. And uh, interestingly, approximately 90% of companies expect to generate incremental revenue through the adoption of 5G. And I, I'm not sure that this is uh, very realistic. 90% um, to me seems a bit high, but I think it really speaks to the awareness and interest in the topic. So the market is very aware of the value of, of connectivity, um, and there's a, a, a very strong uh, degree of interest in the market in looking at where um, innovation around edge connectivity and edge computing can support business uh, growth and revenue growth. That's what I wanted to share with you today. So I hope you found the presentation interesting and uh, you're certainly welcome to reach out to me if you'd like to learn more. Thank you.